Podcast presents a uh, another board game opening for you. Um, today we're doing something that's going to be uh, a little bit different. It's a thing that's close to both of our hearts. Uh, Tom's here with me as well, doing technical stuff, but he's not, probably not going to say much. Um, Tom's actually provided this copy for us yesterday, so thanks a lot for that, Tom. Um, we're going to be looking at Dungeons and Dragons Temple of Elemental Evil board game by Wizards of the Coast. Um, now this is actually based off of an original D&D first edition module um, that is now being rewritten and reprinted for D&D fifth edition. Um, we're both D&D players, we're both very much looking forward to actually playing the Elemental Evil campaign um, and this board gives me a nice sort of insight for us. So we're going to go ahead and crack it open and see what we've got inside. If I can get into it. As always, the games that we're opening and stuff today, um, they're all bought from Chimera in Beeston. So if you are in the Nottingham area, pop along, see Andy, and uh, he'll sort you out with anything you need if you want to get playing these games yourselves. So the box for this actually has like a really nice finish to it. It's it's kind of like, I don't know how to word it, it's all like rigid and stuff, but it's really, really cool. And again, the box is a storage box, which is really, really stiff to get into. In fact, I don't know if I can actually get into it. Good start. So, on the plus side, transporting this, it's uh, not going to have any issues anyway. Thank you, Tom. Well so, let's get inside. Um, everything's packaged really, really well. Um, first thing you've got is your rule book, and it is in a resealable packet as well. Now, I'm not sure if this is available as an online version or not. Um, I've not had a chance to check it out yet. So, in here, you've got various different things. Get that. First, we've got the Fly for DD Attack Wing. Um, this is something I've wanted to play for absolutely ages, so I think we're going to be picking this up in the next few weeks and sort of giving it a bash. Um, it looks fun just because you get to fly dragons around everywhere. You've then got your core rule book, which, as always with these sort of things, is going to have an introduction to the game, uh, how to win the game, how to set it up, what number of players. One of the great things about this game is you can actually play it as a group of people or you can play it on your own. It's actually got a one player sort of mode, which is pretty cool. Um, all the different sort of things you need to do, how to take turns, tile stacks, things like that as well. Um, how do you move? This looks really cool. Um, different sort of attacks cards that you're going to see when we get into the uh, into later things. How the monster deck works. Uh, encounter cards as a treasure deck. Hopefully lots of gold in it. Um, and then you've got like, this little page on the back which is like your gold piece and token tracking. Um, it's really worth taking a couple of photocopies of this if you're going to play a game. Um, just so you can keep that for all of your characters and your players as well. It looks like you get five sort of base characters in the box, but as always, I assume there's going to be expansions coming out for this as they release the rest of the campaign as well. You've then got your adventure book. Um, so much like sort of the other modules and stuff, these will come out and they'll um, give you expansions and stuff as you go along. This lets give you your, your adventures you're going to play it through. So those different things in here, what tiles you need to use, how to set it up, how to stack your tiles for the decks. Oops, it's easy. Um, it's, I believe, 12 adventures. No, oh, 13. You've got 13 different adventures to play in the first set, so it's going to take you quite a while to get through that, and that's pretty cool as well. A um, couple of adverts for D&D &D encounters. Um, so, character sheet on the back as well. That's really handy. Um, so, if you don't want to actually play live D&D, &D, uh, this is sort of just a bit of a fly to get you into that and cover this up. You also get your code for Neverwinter Nights. So if you do play the uh, online MMO, it's free to play, but it has obviously microtransactions and stuff within it. Uh, but you'll get a code in here to get you some free stuff on there as well. Uh, I believe it gives you uh, some free equipment and stuff like that as well. So yeah, pretty cool. You then get a little leaflet that's just basically a, a figure reference sheet. Um, at this point in time, this is essentially a sneak preview to what we're gonna see. And I'm seeing a big black dragon, which makes me very, very happy. So next thing we've got in the box um, is all your player pieces and tile pieces and things like that as well. Um, so you can get into this, crack it out, and then everything will just pop out of the tiles. Uh, let's take one out to show you, if I can get in. There is storage in the box for all these pieces once you've taken them out of the, uh, out of the pop house as well. So you don't need to worry sort of too much. You're not going to be able to lose anything once you've actually got it into the box itself. Loving the feel of opening plastic everywhere today. 
feels like Christmas is going to be a little bit better. So yep, you've got, there's three sheets in there and you literally just pop out the pipe pieces and then they're good to go. They actually fit back in relatively well as well, so if you do want to keep them together on the sheet, um, you can do that. The dragon even has its own card. That's awesome. Then we get into the good bit. Underneath the sheet, you've got loads of bags and cards and stuff. Um, I don't know which one of these I want to do first, but I know which one I want to do first, but I should probably make myself wait. Um, so two packs of cards. Let's have a look and see what we've got inside. The good thing with these sort of D&D games is that all the uh, card backings tell you which deck they belong in. So it's really easy to make sure you're putting everything into the right deck. So this we've got some treasure cards, uh, some monster cards, encounter cards. So it's all on the back there for you. Um, the card quality is really, really good as well. Um, would recommend it, obviously, if you're going to play these a lot, then you want to sort of be sleeving these up. But um, bags of silver, chests of gold, cloaks of protection, there's loads of things in here if you thought to have a look through for treasures. What's next? Looks like we've got two sets of monster decks, so we'll come back to those in a second. Next one is a pack of encounter cards, so... And you need to appease a ghost. Have an elemental blessing, brands, caches, traps, loads of sort of things for you to do. Um, there's attack events, there's just normal events. Loads of things to keep you busy for a while. Oh, more treasure cards at the back here. Seems like there's quite a lot of treasure for you to find. It's always nice. So through these are sort of like fortunes you have to play them immediately it tells you all the play speeds and stuff on the cards and um, you can tell this is made by a company that does a lot to do with card games because everything's really nice and clear as to what you need to do with them on the cards themselves and then you've got your adventure cards so these all look like sort of characters they've all got ACs and hit points which is quite nice Crack over the second pack. I'm expecting to find much the same sort of stuff in here. If I can get in. So again, you've got more encounter cards. And then we've got wizard cards. So uh, we'll be interested to see what these are. Uh, these are all basically your character class. So you've got wizards, rogues. Uh, Rangers, Fighters, my type of class, Clerics, so on these you'll find basically these are like spell cards um, and different sort of ability cards, things like that as well, so you've got all your daily powers for your Clerics, your Fighters uh, powers, all of these are in there for you, just makes it nice and easy to keep track of exactly what's going on where. Then we got on to some of the monster cards. So we've got everything from things with 13 AC, 1 hit point. Um, there are some bigger things in here as well, because there's a dragon. Um, 15, 4. Where's the dragon? I think it's only on the front card. I think it gets a bigger card than everything else. Yep, so loads and loads of things for you to sort of play about with. Last thing you've got in there then is your sequence of play cards. Um, there's one for each player because it will hold up to five players for the game and this just basically it's like a little cheat sheet as to what you should be doing on each turn so here is phase expression phase good and phase um, and then what you can actually do on your phase as well so this is just a really handy little reference card for you moving on from the cards we've then got all these bags full of uh, miniatures so we'll grab these out um, you'd also get a single d20 in the set um, the last time we opened a box the first roll we got was a one not sure if there's gonna be much more of the same there's stuff underneath there as well i wonder why it was still heavy what do we get oh try again okay once a roll that way 11 it's better than a one it's two ones good to go just pop this out of the way for a second um 
so yeah, you've got all these sort of different bags of minions, goblins, bad guys, all those sort of things as well. Um, it's quite an interactive game, the way we're walking around. So we'll start with the best ones in the bunch. So first off, you've got your different heroes. I don't know how clearly you can see those. Oh, fighty man. This is actually a miniature that's very similar to one of my plays in one of our campaigns. Little dwarf. Like the miniatures look really cool, and you do have the option if you want to paint them yourselves, you can do, um, but they are playable exactly as they come out of the box. What I would say is be careful with the uh, with the bow arms on the ranger; uh, they are a little bit fragile. Just want to make sure that you don't sort of take those off by accident or anything. You then got three bags um, <clears throat> of what are pretty similar. Um, so these are basically like your minions. Um, just have a look at the different sort of varieties that you've got. So you get things like lizard men, zombies, arg, arg. Just do funky things with that. Um, there are some little what look like flying bat type things. Um, these actually look really cool when they're stood up because they they're pretty decent sort of miniatures. Keep these together. So that um, obviously Tom can go through and sort everything out as he wants to before he starts to play the game. And you've got another bag here which is just basically, they're slightly bigger but it's mainly like lizard men, human sort of size creatures. And then you're moving on to your slightly bigger base models. So these are what look like hyenas, if I can get them the right way up. Look pretty cool, look pretty scary, look like they're going to shoot you a lot. Nice big bows. Um, so you've got a bag of these sort of creatures as well. Nulls. Yeah, nulls, something like that. Oh, some have got clubs, some might hit you. Like I say, it's completely up to you whether you paint the miniatures or not. Um, I personally wouldn't because I don't think I'd do them justice. But that's up to you guys. And then you've got your elementals as well. So you have what I believe is an ear elemental. Or a water elemental, something like that. And there's a fire elemental in here and an earth elemental as well. So you've got loads and loads of different sort of things that you can use throughout the course of the game. The miniatures are actually a really decent size. Uh, they're not too big; they're going to clutter up too much space, but they're uh, they're big enough that they're quite well detailed. I'm making myself purposefully wait to put the dragon together. <laughs> okay, so these are your big bads. Um, there was a smaller elemental in the uh, in the last one. These are like the uh, the daddies. So this is some sort of two-headed giant ogre. Grrr. Don't ask me why I'm making silly sounds like that, but why not? This I think might actually be the fire elemental. Yep, it actually tells you. Now realise, on the bottom of the miniatures, it tells you what they actually are. Is that the right way of putting your side? Yeah, that's fine. And then you have a nice big air elemental as well. Ooh. It's really cool they actually put those on the bottom and they're all numbered as well so it's really easy to sort of keep things together. And then the last miniature that we're going to find in the box is the one that I'd want to play as a player character but I don't think you're allowed. So this is your black dragon. Um, this actually comes requiring a little bit of assembly. Um, so it come in three pieces. You have the dragon itself. Sorry, big kid. And then you've got just a basic plastic base and a push-in screw. screw. Push-in piece even. Um, on the on the bar itself, one end's got a triangle end, one end's got a uh, bevel fitting. Triangle end goes directly into the base. And then the bevel end, you'll see just inside... The hole at the bottom, there's a little bit that sticks out. And that should tell you which way around you want to be putting the dragon on. If I can get it to work now. There we go. And then you get a pretty cool looking dragon. That can fly around and terrorise your party of players. Rah. In fact, some of those are now underneath the wings. So that's sort of your essential models that you get within the kit. 
Um, last sort of thing for you to look at. Whoops. Dropping bits. She's pretty sure the cat will find that for me in a minute. She usually does. Thank you. Yeah, Tom, Tom's now been relegated to cat. Underneath the main trailer box itself, as I say, this is a really good storage space. There's plenty of space for everything that you've opened up so far. Um, you probably want to dismantle the dragon to put it away, but that's completely up to you guys. If you lift out the plastic tray, you're going to find there's another pack of uh, pop-out dungeon tiles and stuff underneath. So there's quite a lot more in this one. Uh, you've got what looks like three, six, nine, ten other sheets in here. Um, various different dungeon tiles. You've got player cards on the back as well. Um, so you can see what everybody else's sort of stat lines are like. Um, and again, these are exactly the same. Just pop things out and all those sort of things as well. So you have it, that is the Temple of Elemental Evil. Um, again, we're going to be looking sort of in the near future to be putting together a game of this for you, just to show you how to get started with the game, how to sort of play through. But until then, have a great day, and I'm your host, Cast. Look after yourselves. Cheers, guys.